How many of you have ever had a watermelon Oreo? I'm guessing none of you. You probably didn't even, you probably didn't even know that there was a watermelon Oreo. When I think of an Oreo, I usually only think of the original cookie. Turns out, there have been 38 flavors of Oreos made in the last four years. Oreos were invented by the National Biscuit Company in 1912. They have been around for 104 years. Since Oreos hit the market in 1912, 450 billion have been sold. To put that into perspective, there have been 443 billion more Oreos sold than people on this earth. That is really good for the Oreo company, but it might not be so good for the 51% of adults in the United States who want to lose some weight. There are also many ways to eat an Oreo. Many people love to eat an Oreo by twisting the cookie off from the top, then eating the cookie's filling. As for myself, I've never had the patience to do this, so I eat the Oreo whole. The Oreo company has also made 10 different ways to eat an Oreo. Some of these new ways are an Oreo cookies and cream no-bake cheesecake and an over-the-top cheesecake Oreo parfait. Seems pretty fancy for an Oreo, right? Believe it or not, I have actually found an 11th way to eat an Oreo. Here's the story of how that happened. Two years ago, I went on a mission trip to the poorest town of the Dominican Republic. The town looked like it had been deserted for years. There, we were able to build a basketball court for the kids, kids there, give families the medical help they needed, and even run a lacrosse camp for the kids there. One day at the camp, I was having lunch with a boy named Juan from the Dominican. We gave the kids there hot dogs, chips, and some, believe it or not, cookies and cream Oreos. I had finished my lunch, so I was waiting for him to finish. Out of nowhere, the boy had offered me one of his three Oreos. I thought, has he even had an Oreo before? Why would he offer me his food when he probably has never had a day with three meals in his life? This really got me thinking about something. Have you ever noticed that people who barely have anything give more than the people who have so much in their lives? Let me give you an example. Have you ever been going through your closet, looking through your old clothes and toys, and realize you just don't want to give anything up? It's almost like hoarding, but it's different. I believe that this is because the people who have so much in their lives feel like they need material things, while the people who don't have much in their lives have learned to rely on each other. Isn't that amazing? We can actually rely on each other? Uh, being gen people who don't have much in their lives always seem to want to give more. I think this is because they have had the luxury of having the things we have. Being generous and giving is just second nature to the people like this. Shouldn't we be giving back to them, not the other way around? We have been given the blessing of not having to live our lives in poverty. Shouldn't we give back at least a little? Next time you go through your closet, think to yourself, do I really need this? I guarantee you, more times than not, you'll find yourself thinking, maybe I don't really need this to go on living. According to Forbes, since the Great Recession, wealthy Americans have given 1.3% of their incomes to charity, while poor Americans are giving 3.2% of their incomes to charity. Are wealthy people really that greedy? I thought this was probably another example of how people that don't have much give without thinking, but wealthy people don't, bi don't give because they're attached to their materials. A sad reality in life is that teachers are usually very underpaid. Well, that didn't stop teacher Anna Kurzweil from giving back. Kurzweil earned less than $20,000 a year and died just shy of her 101st birthday. She's thought us to be just a plain and ordinary person. Well, turns out this ordinary school teacher gave nearly $2 million to charity at the end of her life. It goes to show that you don't need to be rich to give back. As Bob Hope once said, if you haven't got any charity in your heart, you've got the worst kind of heart trouble. Giving back creates a feeling that no winning goal, no toy, no car, no amount of money can ever fill. I don't think the wealthy realize this, though. In 2014, $358.38 billion was donated to charity. That may seem like a lot to you, but there are $60 trillion in this world in total. We can change the, we can put those numbers closer together, but not in a blink of the eye. It didn't take Thomas Edison one try to invent the light bulb. In fact, it took Thomas Edison over 10,000 tries to invent the light bulb. He didn't give up, and neither should we. If we don't give up, then there's no limit to how much we can give back. It doesn't take much to give back. A pair of sneakers, a baseball cap, even an Oreo can make you someone's hero. 
you can be the hero that you thought you never could be. Thank you.